Welcome to the Transform My Dance Studio podcast. This month, we are delighted to be welcoming back guest hosts, Becca Moore and Danny Rosenberg. Becca and Danny are the co-owners of Rhythm Dance Center in Marietta, Georgia. Now celebrating their 27th season, Rhythm is home to 1,100 amazing students. Becca and Danny are known for their always creative and fun approach to dance and carry that over into all aspects of the studio. In this special eight-part podcast series, Confetti State of Mind, Becca and Danny will be sharing their history, business partnership, and overall positive approach to teaching and running a fun, successful dance studio. Hi, everyone. So today in our Confetti State of Mind, we are going to share lots of fun crafting secrets and talk about how we create some of the fun visuals you might see us post on our social platforms, both for Confetti on the Dance Floor and Rhythm Dance Center. For those of you that are new to the podcast or maybe listening to us for the first time, I am Danny Rosenberg. And I'm Becca Moore. And together we own Rhythm Dance Center in Marietta, Georgia, where we are home to over about 1,200 uh, different dancers, and we are beginning our 28th season. In addition to the studio, we are also the owners and creators of Confetti on the Dance Floor, where we share tons of information, sell creative products, and ultimately hope to inspire dance teachers like yourselves to make dance fun or keep dance fun in their studios. So if you follow us on social media or if you've heard us speak before, you know that we love color and we're really big visual people. We just really love creating things that are going to make people smile. And a huge part of that, for us at least, (laughs) involves crafting. So for us, crafting is really an extension of our branding. As soon as people walk into the studio, something we've created or crafted is absolutely visible. And our customers know that when they step foot into the theater or for the year in shows, there's going to be colorful props and all that helps to set the tone. And since day one, like day one being back in 1993, when we opened Rhythm, we've been crafting always. We've always crafted. I remember our very first lobby and we painted, we went to Goodwill and got a like a coffee table and we painted it and we stenciled it and we had fabric tied everywhere. I'm not going to say that it was really that cute then, but what well, probably was cute or we thought it was, but we've come a long way with our crafting skills. Funny, so, quick, funny quick story though, that table that we did stencil, we stenciled it and we were so proud that we finished it about 30 minutes prior to our very first class ever. And as soon as the first person walked in the door, they rubbed up against it and our whole ivy and grape stenciling smeared all over their legs. Ivy and grapes, y'all. That sounds horrible. I'm sorry. And that is so par for the course for us to have done it right before because, uh, (laughs) I mean, we still do that, by the way. That's still a thing. Um, But anyway, so like back then, whether it was something simple like a poster board situation that we would hang in the lobby um, or as elaborate as backdrops for a year in show, I mean, I remember we... We couldn't afford to rent a backdrop. So we literally, we made them. I'm sure all of you guys have done that before. I mean, we, as day studio owners, I think that we are literally crafty and we figure it out. But we like made all kinds of backdrops to use for our shows um, back then. And we've evolved since then. And our crafts have gotten better, I think. But what's that? They've definitely gotten better. They've gotten better, but we're still just very hands-on DIY type people. And we, we love the way that that looks. So we come up with an idea we, and then we search through our supplies that we have, or we run to our nearest craft store and we get to work and we make it happen. Um, we actually even have a hashtag that we use sometimes called rhythm craft center. Um, because like if you walk in our studio during a crazy costume time or, right before uh, our show or our parties or company concert or something like that, everybody just knows like glue guns are everywhere. Pom poms are everywhere. So it's very much like rhythm craft center at that time. Yes. And we are fortunate as both of us consider ourselves to be crafty and we both enjoy it. So we're usually excited to create things and start putting things together. Um, And depending on the project, we might create the first one (laughs) and then get someone else involved where they can take over and complete the project. Um, A lot of times when it's like costuming, we'll like, we'll start with one, we'll do the first sample and then we're like, okay, someone else take over for now. But we do love. I think even our parents, like our company parents, like they've gotten used to what we do for costumes. So 
they know, like they know when they walk in the studio and see us creating the first, cause we'll do the first costume and then all the other, the, then we'll send it home for the parents to do with like a little, you know, video um, tutorial or whatever. But I think they've honestly all gotten pretty good at it. I mean, for the most part, I think if sometimes when we have a new person, they're like, oh my gosh, are you serious right now? Like what, what, what are you doing? Yeah, they always they always know. Do I need a glue gun or do I need E six thousand? And when they know it's a glue gun, they start to panic just a little bit. Yeah, and our staff rocks at crafting. Like, I mean, I I think that like to work at Rhythm Dance Center, you just you have to be crafty and be able, the craft to, wagon. <laughs> be able to use a glue gun. And if you if you don't know how, we'll we'll teach you. We teach you how. Yeah. So on that same topic, one really important thing to remember is that if you know you don't have the interest or the time to dive into crafting things for your studio, then you need to consider reaching out to find someone that can help you. And um, it's highly likely that you have someone on your staff that really enjoys crafting and that can help you or a parent that loves Pinterest and they consider themselves crafty and would love to help you out. But if you know you can't do it, but it's something you're interested in having done for your studio, you have someone that can help you out. And honestly, we could probably talk about this and talk about crafting and visuals like all day long. But we are today, we're just going to share five areas within our business, both businesses, both confetti and rhythm, where we spend a good bit of time crafting to complete the look that we're going for. Yes. So to first start, we're going to talk about our lobby wall. If you know us and you've heard us speak before, you know that we've talked about our rhythm fun wall that we have in our lobby. Um, it is is usually decorated several times throughout the year. It started as just like a small photo backdrop and we've, it's evolved now into a full wall (laughs) of fun. It's been through many, many, many transitions, many staples, many nails. Uh, we, I think it was like maybe what Danny, two summers ago that we had it actually painted and and patched and all that. So, um, it, it was just plain white and we actually, Danny and I, we just painted it one day. Like we literally just painted a bunch of shapes on it because we didn't know what we wanted to do. And that was actually this year, like right around, right after the holidays, I think at the beginning of the year, we just, we just painted it. So that's, that's still what it is right now. Uh, Um, I I said, it's very cute. It it looks a little bit like a third grader might've done it, but it's really, really cute. (laughs) Yeah, it's Yeah. (laughs) It does kind of look like that. Uh, But anyway, sometimes it's really, really full out. And we just basically did it as as a photo op. So whatever our theme is, like our theme for the year or our theme for open house, or um, if it's Halloween or if it's Christmas or if it's Valentine's or if it's spring or for summer wall. I mean, basically we just kind of use the entire wall like a bulletin board and we just like, put a bunch of fun stuff on there. Um, and the kids get really excited to see what the wall is going to be. And I mean, I don't even know how many different walls we've had at this point. We've had so many different ones there. Uh, but they always take photos there and it's a great place to use, um, for social media op that it turns into free advertising. So basically with each season, we go full out with decorating this wall and um, we base the, the decor, like I said earlier, on the theme for the year and just carry it through to all the different holidays. So that's been a really successful, fun, little crafty place for us. Yeah. So really quickly, we're going to share some of the products and supplies that we have used to do this wall. Um, like Becca said, we've done it so much that we've used so many things. So we're just going to touch on a few things that might be helpful to you guys to get started on maybe your lobby wall. Um, one thing that we've used as a base many, many times is just wrapping paper. Wrapping paper comes in so many different prints and colors. Um, Some of it's metallic. There's so much fun stuff. And you can usually find something that goes along with whatever theme you've got going on. And we literally roll it out and staple it to the wall. Or we use use push pins or we tape it down. And we'll start at the ceiling and go all the way down to the baseboard. And we'll just line it up. And if there's rough edges, we'll trim it with a ribbon. But that's just a great base to start with. And you have so many options. Um, a lot of another thing that we do is we cover different size foam boards like foam core with fabric. We always have a ton of fabric hanging around the studio, whether we've bought random fabric or it's leftover fabric from costumes, and we'll just cover it um, and hang it on the wall. Different prints, sometimes it's sequins, uh, just depends. And that's a great um, visual too, and super super easy, and covers a lot of space. Um, one thing that we've done, depending on the theme and if we want to put a title per se on 
on the wall for that for that go around. We will buy those letters, those big cardboard letters that you can get at the craft stores, Hobby Lobby and whatnot. And we'll cover them in duct tape and either attach them to the wall, nail them to the wall, hang them from the ceiling, that sort of thing. Um, but it's just really colorful and easy. And you can make, you know, big messages on your wall with those letters covered in duct tape because duct tape comes in every print and color imaginable, which is great. And we use it all the time. Um, another thing we do is usually at the top of our wall where it meets the ceiling, if there's any rough patches where it doesn't meet perfectly, we do a big balloon garland across the top, which is super fun and really, really simple to make. Like, yeah, you guys, I know that you've seen like the balloon garlands are really all the rage right now, I feel like. And um, we've actually paid a couple of balloon artists to create them for us. We wanted something really um that seems more difficult and it's not cheap, honestly, but we started kind of doing our own simple version and it's really, really easy. And we make them all the time. Now, basically we just blow up a bunch of balloons, just literally with a balloon pump or with our mouth, like we just blow them up and then we string them together using a large needle, um, and threading it with fishing line, like thin, um, you know, it's called, I don't know exactly what it, what is it really called? Is it fishing line? element maybe or something anyway we just do that and then we literally string it like you're stringing popcorn or something like that and you just pull the balloons all the way down and pull them together and they're honestly they stay really well and you can always tweak it once you get it hung up you can like use some tape if you need to to get them where they need to go we've even popped a couple of balloons before if, it, if an area felt too full or something um but we've honestly, we've gotten really fast at making them. And so is our staff. And they also, they last forever, really. They last a long, long time. So it's a really easy way to add some color and some fun somewhere on a wall. Super inexpensive as well. Yes. Um, another thing that we like to do right in front of that wall is, and this depends on your studio and the and your build, your building, physical building, but we have a drop ceiling in this part of our studio the lobby area. So we are able to hang stuff from the ceiling. So a lot of times we'll use fishing line or ribbon and we'll hang all kinds of things, right? You know, just to where it comes right above their heads, um, just for a kind of dimension on that wall. But uh, one of the things we did um, a couple of years ago, our theme was based on Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. It was called Wonka and the Rhythm Factory. Um, and we created uh, out of those foam sheets that you can get at the craft store, we just cut out big Wonka hats, like the Wonka hat that he that he wears. So we cut out that shape and we put really inexpensive, I think we got them at um, Oriental Trading, but big round bright colored sunglasses or glasses on them. And we took those little sticky letters that I think you can buy them for um, scrapbooking and that type of thing. And we created uh, names that coordinated with the characters from Willy Wonka. So like for Augustus Gl Gloop, we called him Augustus Gloop because it was Halloween and it was kind of scary. Um, we did one that was, uh, Charlie bucket of treats to go along with the candy. So you kind of get the idea. We took all of the characters and put them all across the wall and it was really, really cute. And we were able to leave it up for about, well, we probably left it up much longer than we needed to, but it was up for about a month, which was really, really fun. Um, so for some inspiration for creative walls and a good place to look is in store window displays, especially during the holidays. This is huge for Becca and I. <laughs> yeah. I, um, if you've, I'm sure a lot of you have been to New York for the holidays and that is like the ultimate window <laughs> display. Uh, Bergdorf Goodman in New York is like literally one of my favorite places to go and look for inspiration. Their windows are like art and we, there's one and it's literally, it's a window from like, literally, I think it's like five or six years old at least. It's a, it's old, but there was one that like just really had stuck in my mind. And last summer when we were trying to figure out our, theme for the summer, we ended up going with Confetti Fortune and we were inspired by this, um, this window at Bergdorf's and it was a, it had like a, a big wheel, a big colorful wheel and it was all covered in rhinestones. And so Danny and I literally took a day and we went to, we had a budget. <laughs> we went to a couple of vintage stores and we found a couple of things that we thought we could like kind of use to create this, this, um, image like this, this, picture that we had. And the, for the wheel, we ended up finding a big mirror, just a circular mirror that was super cheap. And we took that mirror and we, um, we painted it and we put glitter on it. We literally used glue and glitter to make the wheel. 
and hung it on the wall and we put like a star in the middle of it or something. Oh, and I, I we glued um, ping pong balls, white ping pong oh, yeah, balls. Yeah, yeah. So it looked like lights. Yeah. Like, it was super yeah, cool. It turned out really, really good. But the point is like, you know, you can take something like, that's why I always take photos all the time on my phone of anything I see that I think that I love. I take a photo of it and I always just go back and reference those photos when we need ideas for stuff. But I think window displays are really great for inspiration because a lot of the window displays, if you really look at them, they are really crafty. Like okay. it's all crafty. It's like the ultimate craft, like Bergdorf Goodman, they craft for a year before they put their um, Christmas windows out, but we craft for an hour and a half and make yeah. it happen. It's a little different, but still the, um, idea, the idea is the same. And for more inspiration, you can also look on Pinterest and just search fun photo backdrops or whatever you're, whatever you're looking for, but just search it in Pinterest and look at magazine photo editorials or ads, party supply stores, you know, there's stores like, um, of course I can't think of the name now, but like party, like paper, paper source, paper source. It's just a cute, everything's cute, you know, cards and wrap, again, wrapping paper, just fun places to find inspiration. Really inspiration is everywhere. If you just keep your eyes open And if you can't remember it, take a picture, like Becca said. Um, You can also check out the hashtag Rhythm Fun Wall um, to see some of the walls that we have created at the studio. So the next thing we're going to talk about is uh, custom costumes. So from the minute we decided to open our studio, we knew we wanted our company, um, our our competition costumes, our competitive performing company, we wanted those to be custom costumes. Uh, We wanted to do something completely different. We wanted to try to be really unique so that no other studios would have them. And obviously back then things were way more simple, but we still tried to find ways to stand out, to create ways to stand out in our costumes. And of course, we are big fans of rhinestones. Um, We still use them on our jazz and production costumes and sometimes like a musical theater. I will say that we're not huge rhinestone people anymore. We are, when we use a rhinestone, we're huge rhinestone people. But like, we don't do that on every costume that we definitely like to let our teachers kind of like do their own thing. But like when it comes to a jazz or production, usually we're going to like bling it out some. Uh, but we also always just like to take it a step further with some crafting and texture patterns, dimension. Um, they've always been intriguing to us. So we try to really think outside the box when we're decorating our costumes. Yeah. So some of the things that we've done um, being super crafty when making our costumes are um, one thing that we've done, and this isn't so crafty, but it's just thinking outside the box, is we've we've created our own fabric and had it printed. And um, we've done this a couple of times now over the last couple of years, and it's worked out really well. Beck and I will search and search and search to find the perfect fabric for whatever dance or piece it is. And if we literally cannot find it, we will create an image and have it. We can upload it. There's so many different companies that print fabric and digitally print it and you just upload it and they will print it out on any kind of fabric that you want. So we've done that a couple of times and that's really been great. We did it this year with a little uh, Paris situation. We needed some really cute pastel Paris images. So we did our own thing. So that was really fun. Um, Another thing we did this year, I say this year, like literally a few months ago, right before the pandemic, um, we bought some really cool vinyl when we were in New York shopping for uh, fabric for costumes. We honestly didn't know what we were going to use it for. It's kind of like see-through raincoat fabric, um, but it's definitely vinyl. We bought it in a ton of different colors. Um, We thought maybe we would use it for props for the recital, which didn't end up happening. Um, But what we ended up doing is using it to create fairy wings um, for one of our pieces. Our production number, our minis were fair. They're the fairies, but it was a hip hop dance. And all the fairy wings that we found were super pastel and traditional. So we were like, we've got to do something to these wings to make them um, a little funkier. So we cut out um, all of these different colors of vinyl and shapes, uh, like oval shapes, the shapes of the butterfly wings that were already, that we purchased. We bought like, I think they were like $2 a piece. We cut out the vinyl, we glued it on hot glue. I think I lost all of my fingerprints gluing them on because we had to be so delicate. And then we trimmed all of the edges with gold um, spiked studs. And then well, also, you forgot one part. First, you used um, ribbon. I used ribbon to, to disguise the glue because right. since it was the clear vinyl where we put the hot glue on, you could see the glue. That's so they had to cover it with ribbon. Right. I also and lost then, more. Then we had to put gold spikes. You guys, this was like a super intense project. It was not 
It was not quick. It was not quick, but the outcome, I mean, I'm the telling you the parents was awesome. I did the first one and the parents did the rest and we ended up setting up an assembly line to have them all do different parts of it. But the parents thought we were absolutely insane. And when the finished product was done, they were all freaking out. The kids were freaking out. It, like they're super cool wings. Like they are not your tr- traditional pastel sweet little wings anymore. Um, we also used some of that vinyl to um, embellish the boys' costumes because it's so hard to, you know, for us anyways, it's hard to finalize boy costumes, especially for hip hop. And this piece happened to be hip hop. So I ended up gluing different shapes of this vinyl onto black t-shirts and then outlining it with studs. And they came out super duper cool. So who would have thought raincoat vinyl fabric that we bought for a prop for a recital ended up being part of a costume. And it was really cool. Um, one other thing we like to do is create what we call corsages, but they really have nothing to do with flowers most of the time. So if there's part of a costume that maybe there's a part of it that's really kind of plain and boring, but we want to add something to it, we'll start with a piece of felt as a base and we'll just start gluing things to it. We might glue um, different accessories based on the theme. We might glue pom-pom balls. We might glue flowers. Um, any kinds of trim that we can do, but we'll just start adding things to it. And then that piece can be attached, whether it's glued on or safety pinned to the costume. And it could be like on the front chest, or it could be down for a belt in the place of a belt or on their hip or something like that. But that's really cool. And it's something that you can craft for sure. Uh, also, um, just basically in general, we, we sometimes we'll just pick an area of a costume or even an entire skirt and we will just glue, hot glue a lot of stuff on it, like pom-pom balls, flowers, ribbon, trims, foam shapes, stickers, charms, studs, appliques, like we have glued all kinds of things on our costumes, um, and w- like last year, an- one thing we did for our, um, Willy Wonka themed costume for our minis. Our poor mini moms, honestly, you guys, it's usually them. It is. It have is. To, have to do it because it just is the mini, the minis. So sorry, mini moms. <laughs> um, but we literally had found this tool, this really cool colored tool that had like little pearls on it. And we wanted to use it in some way, but like our costume person couldn't like sew it because the pearls kept like coming off. So we're like, oh, we're using this. We bought it. So we literally got pom-pom balls and we had all the mini moms cut squares from the pearl tool and wrap the pom-pom balls and tie each side with a ribbon to create little pieces of candy, like pom-pom pearl candy. They literally probably made five or 600 of them. I don't know. There were so many. And then they hot glued it onto their costume. That's (laughs) the kind of stuff we do, you guys. Like it's crazy. But it makes such a difference. It makes such a statement and the compliments and comments that we get. And of course people are like, where did you buy that? I'm like, well, it started. I (laughs) I also think one thing about Danny and I is that a lot of times this kind of stuff, it is so detailed And like a lot of people are like, well, from stage, you can't even see it. We don't care. (laughs) We're just like, we want, we want it that way. Like the judges can usually see it. And like, it just, there's just something about those extra special details that we, we want. So it's like, even if no one knows it's there, but us, it, we're like, okay, that's cool. (laughs) We're fine with that. Like we really want this little tiny, crazy piece of pom-pom pearl tool, candy tied in ribbons psycho, but whatever. That's just, that's just the way you are. Um, but yeah, so we tend to just like make it work. So if we don't like the end result of a costume, which doesn't happen very often, I will add that. And if it, if it has happened, it's usually our fault. It's not like our costumer's fault. It's like, we think we want something and then it's made and it's not what we want. For example, I will tell you this story. We were, um, doing a little spy dance and we, we were in New York and we wanted to try and it was again for the minis. We make cool costumes for everybody, but for some reason we're telling you guys about all of our mini costumes. But uh, we, we were like, let's try to like go outside of our comfort zone. Let's not do, cause we're always into pink and yellow and bright colors. We're like, if they're going to be spies, we want it to be like a little bit darker or whatever. So we found this really cool fabric. It was black and it had this like cool floral print on it or whatever. And we were all into it. We're like, we're going to make this work. We're going to be different. Da, 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 whatever. So we did it. We designed the costume. We got it back and we were like, we don't like it. 
Like, and it wasn't, it wasn't the style of the costume or anything like that. It was literally the fabric. We were like, it just doesn't feel like us. Like we're like, we're not like our spy dance can't be black flowers, black and flowers. Like it needed to be like pink because that's just kind of who we are. So basically on the one morning when I was driving to the studio um, for this rehearsal, I was just started thinking about donuts randomly and decided that maybe it would be a donut spy dance and someone had stolen donuts. So um, I just thought this was a way to add pink fun things back into our costume. So we did that and we cut out or Danny cut out or I cut out. I found, I found some donut fabric or we yeah, had think, donut fabric made actually. Yeah, I think we had, no, we didn't have it made. I think we bought it like at mood or we, we had seen it at mood and they sent it to us. And then we also ordered like dish towels. Do you remember that? There like, it is. We found dish towels, really cute dish towels with donuts on them. And we ordered a bunch of those and we cut them out and we hot glued them on felt. And then, cover. we did that to cover every single flower that was on this fabric. But didn't we even put, so what were the sprinkles? We got like legit beads and then put that I on there. It made it look like sprinkles on the donuts. Oh yeah. It was, it was, it was ridiculous. You guys, it was ridiculous. But it ended up being so cute. And you would never have known that there were yeah. flowers. And yellow and- the donut spectacular. And it was really cute. But so the moral of that, of this story is just that you should stick to what you know that you're going to love sometimes. Sometimes, I mean, going outside the box is obviously necessary at times, but in this crafty situation, we just know now if we're doing a mini dance, it just, it needs to be pink for the most part. <laughs> Also, just know that if you do something and you don't love it, you can be crafty and fix it. Yeah, yeah we did. We did. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and in general, when crafting or adding things to your costumes, like hot glue guns, hot glue, hot glue, hot glue, hot glue, hot glue. Egg stock and hot glue. Yeah. <laughs> That's a thing. Um, another thing that we do a lot of is photo shoots. So between confetti and then rhythm, we find ourselves having photo shoots several times a year. And because we are such theme-driven people, we like to create and craft backgrounds for each one of those photo shoots. There are certainly times when we like a solid, clean background for some of our shots, but most of the time we are trying to come up with something completely different than what we've done in the past. Um, You can scroll back through our confetti Instagram feed and you can see a ton of the different backgrounds that we've created um, for some of our photo shoots, but we're just going to share a few of those with you now super quickly. Also, I was just going to say, if we keep saying confetti, confetti is confetti on the dance floor. That is um, our other business besides Rhythm Dance Center. So confetti on the dance floor, when we say confetti, that's what we're referring to if we didn't say that already. Um, about literal paper falling from the sky, although we love that as well. Yeah. Um, so um, one thing we did was just like some balloon art for a backdrop. Um, in addition to creating balloon garlands, which we talked about a little earlier, um, we have created like a whole wall using the long skinny balloons that you would use like to make animal shapes. Um, but we actually found this on Pinterest. It was um, a company called Oh Happy Day. They um, had created this really awesome fun balloon wall. And that's where we got the idea for this. Uh, But we taped them to um, just a plain white wall in different directions, different shapes. Um, And then that, that one specifically, we also just got the regular letters that said make dance fun, like, and taped those up there and took uh, some really cute photos. And then we've also used the balloons and we've wrapped them in cellophane. Um, kind of like I was talking about at our costume, but on a bigger scale, but you've just wrap them in cellophane to look like candy. I'm sure you guys have seen that before. Um, I think that that's a cute way to decorate, but we also taped those in the wall um, for like a sweet candy themed shoot. So that was really cute. Yes. And then we've also used, and I talked about this a little bit earlier with, um, with our wall at the studio, but for confetti on the dance floor photo shoots, we've used tissue paper and wrapping paper. And we've literally just cut them into different shapes, like big giant triangle, or even just take big blocks, big squares, and overlap them in different angles onto a wall. And that can create a really, a really cool look. Like the tissue paper is kind of like a see-through look on a white wall. Um, 
it just creates an interesting and colorful look. And for one of our shoots that was a travel theme, we did the exact same thing, but we took street maps, which believe it or not, was really hard to find. I think I ended up finding them at a gas station. They were hard to find, but we did use street maps. We opened them up, cut them out and just taped them up to the wall. And it was super cool. I think we used some like hot pink yarn or something on those maps to like kind of create like a little path of where we were going. Yeah. Uh, yeah they were cute. Um, and then also one year for a holiday shoot, we had used like um, just a plain pink background, but we got white washi tape and washi tape is just like a craft tape. That's like, you can buy it in lots of different prints or solid colors and it's really easy to work with but we used washi tape to create the shape of a mantle, just a really simple mantle and then like a candle. And then we added a balloon wreath over it and it was adorable. It's really one of my favorite photo shoots that we have ever done. Um, it just turned out so cute. It was very simple, but just that white tape on the hot pink looked so cute and fun. Yeah, it was, it was, <clears throat> excuse me, it was super cute. Um, and we talked on this briefly a little earlier, but... Fabric is something great to use too for a, for a background. You can literally just hang old, any fabric that you have on the wall. You can nail it to the wall. You can throw it up over a um, throw it up on the wall, hang it over something, but glue it to foam board or staple it to foam board and hang that on the wall. But it's super easy. And if if you do any custom costumes and you have extra fabric sitting around, it doesn't take very much to make a cool look. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about is props. Uh, we definitely craft handheld props as well as larger props and sets for our shows every year. Um, we just think they add a lot to the overall look and they really help tell the story that we're presenting. So depending on the prop, we do sometimes have things built and then we paint them and embellish them. And we are definitely more of the embellishers. We don't construct things like we have to hire people to construct them. We definitely rely on others for that part. Yes. And there's far too many uh, of these to tell you about all of them. So I'm just going to share a few examples of the props that we've created and crafted over the last couple of years. Um, for this, this current year that we just finished, our theme was Rhythm Upon a Dream. So it was based on Sleeping Beauty and Maleficent. And we created Larger Than Life, um, a storybook and a cake and a dress that was pink on one side and blue on the other. Um, and all of these were made from those large pieces of foam board. So pretty, pretty inexpensive. Um, we ordered them, we picked them up. They're about four feet by eight feet in size. So they're super big. So if you're in a theater, it looks really cool to have this giant, you know, cake dancing. We just put one of our staff members behind it and it dances across the stage and the storybook danced across the stage. I think if you thought, if you go on our Instagram, like during our in-house performance this year that we did, I did like a um, little hyperlapse of the props dancing. Um, you guys should try to go find that. It's actually really cute. And you can see the props. They're so cute. Yeah, that would have been the end of May-ish. Um, but each one was decorated with felt. Um, we did a little bit of painting on it with fabric paint or craft paint. We used some fabric. We used those glitter foam sheets um, to cut out stuff. We used leftover colored stud trim from our costumes. We did anything, again, anything we can find in the studio, we glued on it to make it colorful and exciting. And yeah, they're super fun. Uh, also this year we created, um, these fun boom box ha handheld props. The dance we used them for, it was a kindergarten and I think a first and second grade hip hop dance and we called it make it pink make it boom and it was sort of a play on the make it pink make it blue scene from sleeping beauty which at the beginning of the year when we announced our theme and we were like asking everybody like what their favorite parts were like that was hands down everybody's favorite scene like the make it pink make it blue scene so um we did this little hip-hop dance and we found um the image of a boom box and we just printed several of them out on our studio printer, honestly. And then we um, ordered boxes from Uline that were similar to the size of like a cereal box. And we glued the printouts on both sides of the box. And then we covered all the rest of the areas with bright colored duct tape. It was super easy, super effective. And then they have these like really lightweight um, boxes, boom boxes that they could dance with at the beginning of their dance. We did the same exact thing last year. We did our, um, when we did our Willy Wonka, it was Wonka and the Rhythm Factory was the name of our show. And we did the same thing with, um, and we made them into hand, big handheld Wonka chocolate bars. Actually, they were rhythm. They weren't Wonka. They said rhythm, like kind of in a Wonka font. 
Um, but we did the same thing. We printed out the things and we, um, we used duct tape around the edges and they turned out really, really cute. Yeah. And they, they're so effective on stage from a distance because they're bigger, like a little bit larger than you would they're normally. Easy for the little preschoolers to hold on to too. So light and simple. So one thing that we do on almost every single set that we create it, um, is what we call the mosaic treatment. I have no idea what it's actually called, but we like to call it the mosaic treatment. I'll give a shout out to our teacher, um, Anna, because she is the one who did this. And she's actually does a lot of our drawing and stuff for our props. Like she's really artistic and she could do it so fast, but it was her idea. I don't know where she got it. Other people may do it, but I'm going to shout out Anna because I feel like it's her idea. <laughs> And it's really super easy. It, it can be a little time consuming if you're creating something really large. This is where you get some help involved. But we just take those glitter foam sheets that you get from the craft store that we talked about earlier and we cut them into um, small pieces. I mean, depending on the scale of your project, but small pieces meaning anywhere from two inches to four or five inches and different shapes like triangles and ovals and diamond shapes, um, squares. And then you literally just hot glue all of those down kind of close together, like into a little puzzle piece. So it looks kind of mosaic. Um, or like stained glass effect, and it creates a sparkly and bright visual without using actual glitter, which can be very, very messy. And but I also feel like most theaters, like a lot of theaters don't want you to use glitter or have glitter. So I think that that was one of the reasons we started doing it, because this was a way to like have something sparkly and it wasn't glitter that was going to like fall off onto the stage and everything. Yeah. Um, but they're really cute. They, and, and like Danny said, they're really easy. So like that's something that like, if you have like, say, we always end up using like our alumni and stuff that come back to help us around the time for the show. And they just sit there all day and they cut out, <laughs> they cut out little pieces, little triangles of the, the, um, of the glitter paper to use for all of our mosaic props. Okay, so moving on to um, our next thing is going to talk about parties and events. And we definitely use our crafting skills big time when we host parties and events. It's definitely, again, it's a way to create something unique at your party. Um, and, and, so, and a lot of times it does take more time, but it's definitely more cost effective a lot of times than just purchasing a lot of decor or hiring someone to do it for you. For our company party every year, we craft all the centerpieces and we usually do a couple of unique and fun photo backdrops. Um, and we've actually shared a couple of these tutorials on our Confetti on the Dance Floor blog. Um, like the year we did Rhythm and the Beast, we um, hot glued literally a billion roses on. We just got like that fake green turf. I think you can buy that at Home Depot, right, Danny? So we did. Yes. And then we hot glued that on pegboard. And then we glued a ton of roses and we did like an ombre effect. So it was like a darker red, a darker red and into like a bright pink into like a really pale pink. And, um, it turned out great. And we've used those backdrops over and over. And we even still have them, um, in our storage shed. So something like that, if you, you know, you can keep it and use it over and over again. Um, we also, another one that was, I feel like it was our, probably one of our most popular blog posts ever. We literally just got um, a large piece of foam core, uh, foam board, and we bought a bunch of those colorful pinwheel fans. And we literally just glued them all over the board. And then we put a few little metallic streamers in there and it was adorable. That was one of my favorite backdrops ever. I'm pretty sure it was really cute. Um, and then like last year we started doing this one for Wonka and the Rhythm Factory. And I thought it was gonna be really easy and it wasn't. <laughs> and we started the night before we were loading in. I feel like we didn't start it till like nine or 10 o'clock and we stayed, to we stayed there way late figuring it out. But it ended up being worth it. It was really one of my favorite ones. It was so cute. Um, and we just like glued. I'm not going to try to explain to you. You're going to have to like look at the picture. So you'll look at a picture of that one because I can't explain it to you. But anyway, lots of party supplies, a glue gun, and you'll be on your way. Um, another thing about these backdrops, like once you create them, use them over and over again. Use them in your dance camps. Use them for your open houses, use them for your company events, like even like something like a big sis, little sis reveal. Um, you they're always taking pictures there. So we've definitely, once we create one, we use it a ton, a ton of times before we actually retire it. So you can reuse those over and over. Definitely. And kind of going back to the centerpieces for our parties, um, we usually have about 
on a normal party here, we have about 45 tables. So we'll take our theme and we will just start collecting things that we have at the studio, random stuff. Like we have a ton of hat boxes or things like that. And we'll cover them in different kinds of, different kinds of paper that go with the theme. And we'll just find stuff that we have around the studio. Yes, we end up buying some stuff, but a lot of times we can use stuff that we have that works with the theme. And we just literally start gluing things from ribbon to duct tape, to pipe cleaners, pom-poms, anything fun and crazy and bright. Um, that we can find in the studio pretty much always ends up working for us. Yeah, we we basically, we just encourage you to use your imagination to try to come up with some fun things that you can craft to enhance your decor at your studio events. Yes. I promise you it will be very well received. And it's also just fun. And the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. Yes. So we hope you've enjoyed our crafty chat today. We really do feel like going the extra mile and taking the time to personalize and craft some of your props, photo backdrops and costumes will really make a statement and your customers are going to notice it. Um, We realize it's kind of hard to visualize a lot of the stuff that we've talked about today. So in your spare time, because I know dance teachers have so much spare time, that is sarcasm. uh, Please consider heading over to confettionthedancefloor.com to check out our latest blog post where we are sharing um, some of the images of our favorite craft projects over the past few years and a lot of the ones that we've talked about today. So this way you can have an actual visual of some of the stuff we've created. We are always happy to answer any of your questions you might have regarding crafting or anything that you want to ask. So feel free to send us a message or leave us a comment on Instagram or Facebook. And that's it. So thank you guys so much for listening today. And we will be back next week for a fun new episode of A Confetti State of Mind. Bye. We hope you enjoyed today's episode of The Dance Studio Doctor, powered by the Transform My Dance Studio podcast. Don't forget to join us over in the Dance Studio Owners Hub Facebook group for more resources and support in growing the dance studio of your dreams while reclaiming your life.